Thanks a lot. Uh, as you hear already, my name is Adrian Gonzalez. I work uh, for the firma Blackbridge uh, in the application research uh, department. Uh, we have uh, five satellites that image the Earth. And uh, this is uh, one example of one work that we did that uh, was based on the so-called uh, Geoland project that was uh, uh, hired by the European Union. And the technical coordination was given to the Environmental uh, European Agency. That uh, was not other thing that uh, land cover classification project with uh, mainly high thematic uh, resolution layers and uh, the layers that uh, was still in the project is uh, impervious areas, forest, wetlands, water bodies, and grasslands. But uh, the difference between this project and probably the others that uh, we were seeing in this uh, conference is the size of the project because uh, it was dealing with the whole extension of Europe. Uh, but not all the countries were included, but uh, only 39 countries of uh, the Europe, that is more or less 6 million square kilometers. Uh, our company was part of a consortium with two other companies in Europe, one uh, from Spain, Indra, and the other one from Belgium, that is Eurosense. And it was a bid that uh, we won uh, just to generate the, the permanent grassland layer based on remote sensing images. We started the project in uh, March 2012. As I said, 39 countries and 6 million square kilometers. But uh, the problems comes here because uh, they were requesting a minimum accuracy of the classification of 80%. And that accuracy uh, was about to be measured uh, by each of the countries where the, the, the procedure was applying. And for that, uh, we were given a 30 month time. But we needed some time to just start up the project that was uh, set up uh, uh, time like eight months. Therefore, we had only 18 months to work. And the only way that we could do it was uh, automating the processing. So first of all, before starting, uh, I would like to show what is a grassland. A grassland is an open area covered by natural vegetation that is normally grass, therefore grassland. And these six pictures that you see are all grasslands. Uh, the territory in Europe is very different, even that it's not as big as another countries like uh, United States of Russia, uh, was covering from Greece to Finland and the grassland in each of the countries is very different. And all of them were need to be recognized from satellite images automatically. So this was mainly the challenge. Uh, we had the task to design the workflow for this uh, processing. And uh, the complete design of the procedure was generated by us. Part of the generation of the grassland was uh, done by other of the companies. But we assume the main one that is, in fact, I'm very quickly explained. We used remote sensing images, but we had to use multi-temporal approach. Uh, that means that we don't use only one image over one area, but many images. Uh, that images were stored in a spatial database in order to optimize the procedure. We need to eliminate the effects of atmosphere. And then once we had the images already processed uh, uh, and uh, atmospherically corrected, we start the generation point in two parallel branches. One, generating 
what we can call the, the generic raster parameters that is processing, generating indexes that are pretty standard for the remote sensing applications. And in order to assure the classification or the right classification of grassland, we need to generate also uh, classification, you said uh, object-oriented approach. Therefore, we need to convert our image to segments and then process the image itself. Uh, and here would be the most complicated part that I will skip today, that uh, the classification was done using the so-called decision tree classification, that is a probabilistic uh, approach that was given pretty nice results. As input data, we used uh, remote sensing data. Uh, the European community, the European Union, is pretty practical in that aspect. So they bought the complete coverage for Europe for uh, IRS images and AVIPS images. Both of that comes from one platform, the Hindi satellite. They used also our images with two different resolution and uh, as there were some spots or some gaps not covered, they bought also a coverage of spot images. As you can see here, the uh, basic parameters of each images are some way different. For instance, the spatial resolution comes from five meters to 60, and the coverage area was from 370 kilometers by 370 until 25 and 25. Therefore, was needed uh, a, a big number of spatial operations to do that. What you see here is uh, probably better seen in a screen, but uh, this is a complete coverage of Europe, a mosaic done and based on our images. Rapid eye. And now a little bit deeper in the processing. We took all the images and we fed into uh, one spatial database. We corrected all the images atmospherically in order to obtain the so called TOA, the top of, top of atmospheric images. And then uh, we had to finish in this definition of what is for us a work unit. As we have many different images, many different geometries, and many different uh, spatial resolutions, we have to agree in uh, the so-called work unit. And we agreed that one work unit was about to be an IRS image. This uh, work unit was the, 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 the centrum of the processing, and we concentrate all the work that we do by work unit, and we deliver the data that way. The problematic that we have to deal with is that uh, the final information needs to be delivered in the national projection system and as we had to uh, work with 39 different countries, we had to work with 39 different projection system. And uh, as we have many different geometries, as many said already, we had to cut all the images that we were using with the size of the work unit, uh, using the work unit as a cookie cutter, we can say. I am showing you just an example, Spain. Spain was uh, made up of 120 work units, but as you see also, this is not a perfect chessboard. We have also a big uh, overlap in some images, and in some cases uh, that was not needed to process the complete 120 work units, but I would say for each of the countries we had to process at least 80% of this one. 
Once we have the image already atmospherically corrected and cut it with the size of one work unit, we generate it what we called on the first stage of the project biophysical parameters, but then we corrected the name to be vegetation parameters that are some normal parameters uh, for people who is specialized in uh, remote sensing are parameters that are calculated based on the digital numbers contained in each band of the images. And those are just uh, arithmetic combination between bands. We calculated also based on those uh, uh, vegetation parameters the so-called seasonal statistics. As I mentioned already, we had to use a multi-temporal approach. Therefore, for each of these parameters, we have more than one date, one, one, more than one image, and therefore we had to calculate the statistics of each of them. And at the same time, uh, as the grasslands in different areas are so different, we had to include in the classification process the so-called texture parameters. This analyze uh, the content, of, we could say in very badly English, uh, we analyze here the color combination of the images, but here we should analyze also the texture of the objects containing the image. Here is just an example of two of these uh, vegetation parameters. One is the so-called NDVI. The NDVI give us uh, a kind of indication of the greenness of the areas. And we have already the ground cover that is indicating uh, the percentage of soil that is covered by vegetation. This is just two examples of the parameters that we use. The last part of the process was to convert this image that is a raster, is a so-called TIFF file. We had to convert this image in different segments that each segment is an object which has different characteristics in order to generate image objects. And those objects were fed using training areas in a decision tree classification. That is a probabilistic software that analyzes uh, the weight of each of the variables used, and it generates, at the end, the results requested by the community. As I said, uh, the only way to do that work on time was uh, automating and just some uh, information, probably not interesting for everybody, but at the end we had to uh, set up a dedicated server with 16 uh, uh, CPUs. We had to, to set up just storage to process and the most difficult part that was uh, pretty painful was uh, the production requirements of the system indicated that uh, the, the only way to process this amount of data was uh, working 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Uh, that's something that required the setup of a team dedicated to that. And once we produced, we uploaded the information to one server dedicated to be uh, the delivery server to uh, interchange the information uh, with other companies. How we implemented this automatic proce uh, processing uh, chain? Uh, we just programmed us in our company technical information, yeah, we just used a programming language called Python, and uh, we wouldn't, we will not, uh, we decided that we will not use any commercial software, therefore we used uh, open source libraries. 
and we generated the code to process the whole information. At the end, the final of the history is that uh, we could process all 39 countries in Europe. We also process the so-called uh, overseas territories that are all the island and all the territories that don't belong to the European continent but belong to Europe like Suriname uh, or Azores, all the island that were uh, part of some European country. We processed everything in 14 months instead of the 18 original. And additionally to this, as we had some parts with, uh, covered with clouds and some parts not covered by images, we should have a second run to cover the gaps. And now all the information was delivered to each of the countries participant of the project and they, currently, uh, they are currently running the uh, on-site verification process, that is the check of uh, the information that we generated, the correctness of that. As an example, I am showing you Hungary. Uh, in Hungary, we obtained the overall accuracy of 92%. And this is the result of that analysis. You can see here the grassland layer. This is just uh, an enhancement of this area. So thanks a lot for your attention. And any question, I would try to answer. Thank you very much for that talk. I'm going to lead off with a question and then turn it back to the audience to see if there's a question. I see we do have someone in the back row. Um, a two-part question, but they're connected. How long does the, the, the process take? I mean, if you think about a country like of Spain and you wanted to do this mapping, what is the total duration of time required to do it? It's just a rough estimate. And you talked about your computer hardware in terms of processors, RAM, and storage. What is the bottleneck? Is the bottleneck for speeding this up number of processors, or is it RAM, or is it something else? OK, so answering the first question, uh, on the beginning was pretty easy. Uh, we divided the total number of work units by the time that we need to use. And we set up just a kind of uh, bottom of processing time. And we said that we should process in less than that time. That took a while because we need to uh, optimize our code until we reach that point. Uh, the, the hidden question of that is after we generated our process, uh, the images were to a QA process, and sometimes they discovered that they should reprocess the work unit. Mm -hmm. So answering your question, when everything was OK, each work unit was about five hour times. But we need to consider a QA and go back to this stuff. And the second question, uh, it was pretty funny, but the bottleneck of the process was the storage. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, designed the system, trying to optimize it everything, but the storage was sometimes pretty slow, and we had to minimize the so-called concurrent access to the storage. That is, many processes accessing the, accessing the same storage at the same time because it was causing pretty much delays. Mm. Okay. It requires lots of space and uh, handling images. Really, we appreciate you, sir. Just for understanding, how many data, data of uh, sets you consider in a year? Did, did you take in only one data pass? So. Analysis? Telling you the, the end of the history, uh, we generated approximately 70 terabytes of data okay. when uh, the project was finished. Uh, how many data paths you have taken? How many data sets for each area? Uh, and each, uh, so it's uh, kind of uh, problematic because depends on how many dates of each image have per work unit. Okay. When you consider a work unit, you need to consider it spatially, but also temporarily. And in some places, we have 20 different dates. And in some places, we have only two or three. 
Therefore, your question is uh, pretty generic. In the worst case scenario, we processed about 20 dates per each work unit. And this is a kind of uh, arithmetic progression because if you generate, if you use 20 images, or 20 dates, then you need to generate uh, 10 different vegetation parameters for each date. Yeah. And then you need to generate statistics for each of these uh, 20 generated images again, and then to convert everything to objects. Okay. So uh, at the end, in the worst case, we have more or less uh, something like 200 files per image. Okay. Uh, can we use the uh, microwave data uh, in this regard? Sorry? Can we use the microwave remote sensing data? Yes, of course. So uh, we have used only uh, visible Op optical data. You optical used. data, but uh, yeah, the procedure can be generated with using any kind of images. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Adrian. Thank you.